We're from the lower nine, don't mind dying. That was the slogan uh, in our neighborhood. This is the most fat, one of the most fabulous places in the world, you know, where you laugh and cry. You know, we laugh so we don't cry. You know, and, and you know, for a young black man, uh, people think Chicago and Baltimore are tough. But this little, this little southern city is times 10. There are certain rules in the neighborhood of how you conduct yourself. This little gutter, grimy, cult culturally wonderful town, you know, has, has some of the highest hotel room occupancy uh, in the nation. I mean, if you, 60%, that's good. We got 80, 90% occupancy. There ain't nothing happening on the weekend. You know, we have, we have a culture that's being sold all over the world. We got 6 million uh, uh, day stay an additional two million overnight to go to 10 that was here. So, you know, there's a lot of money coming through this town. It's, it's just, why didn't any of it land up, land with us, you know? So especially if I'm rolling back your bed, I'm the one asking you if you want some fries with that damn shake, you know? So why, we, why we don't get none of it? You know, why we don't have a living wage? Why we can't have some benefits? You know, why my brothers and sisters engineering students can't get a job at engineering firm, they're working at the hotel. You know, and I tell people right now, the problem in our community is that the underbelly is so strong that it pulls down good kids and marginal kids. At least when, when I was coming up, the, the, the middle was strong enough to pull you up. Right now, the middle is so weak, man. You got good kids in this town carry guns because bad kids got guns. Everybody wants to feel safe. You didn't do anything uh, to be America's post, America's poster child. We didn't do anything to raid our neighborhoods, uh, black men and boys, to the point now where you can't find them uh, in our neighborhoods. We didn't deserve that. All we did was build this country. In a, in a tourism economy, and then too often in a cultural economy, uh, and especially in, in a racist economy, you're not gonna invest in your workforce to uh, to, to the point where they're gonna demand better conditions and more wages. And that's been standard practice here in New Orleans and, and in the South uh, for hundreds of years. It's no different from the ag agricultural system that's, that, that slavery grew out, that created a foundation for American wealth. You know, you're always subject to somebody else. You're always in a way, and you, you don't control your own life. The, the obstacles in your life, some of you didn't put their hurdles in your way that you didn't place that at your home. But when you look in the mirror, if all you see is you, don't wait for somebody else to come fix it. You gotta work on that shit yourself.